The WHO declared monkeypox a global health emergency, but here in the U.S., the response to the outbreak has been slow. At times, chaotic. Websites are crashing, testing can be non-existent, vaccines in short supply. With nearly 3,500 cases across 45 states, according to the CDC, vaccine shortages, especially in places like New York, have left communities frustrated and at risk, specifically gay communities. Now, a group of 50 lawmakers is pushing President Biden to declare monkeypox a public health emergency and to get vaccines already owned by the U.S. into circulation. With us tonight is Congressman Darren Soto of Florida. He's one of the Congress members who signed that letter pushing for monkeypox to be declared a public health emergency here in the United States. Congressman, we appreciate your time. We know the WHO declared monkeypox a global health emergency. What's been the holdup here? Well, first, we joined a letter last week to request the Biden administration declare an emergency. I think they're weighing that carefully now. Uh, certainly, we've seen over three thousand cases in the United States already uh, in various different states, uh, including my own uh, state of Florida. Uh, and I think they need to balance it against uh, resources for coronavirus and uh, making sure that it's a true emergency before uh, they alarm the public more about it. Kids are now being affected, small numbers, but it's kids. Does that make a difference? Yes, and obviously I think it sh there should be a public health emergency declared. We saw the WHO already declare one, uh, and I expect we'll see an announcement this week. Um, we want to get to at least a million uh, vaccines uh, by the end of the week. We're at 181,000, so we'll keep on the pressure, and the experts over in the Biden administration will, will weigh all the details, but I'm hopeful we'll see an announcement soon. Congressman, I'm gay. I've been talking about this issue on my show here for months. I picked up on it on Twitter before a lot of people did because of the people I'm following. And people have, they've been afraid to say that almost 100% of the patients initially in the U.S. were gay men having sex with other men, many times anonymous or multiple partners. The origins were many times circuit parties. You know, a lot of people are having sex there. They're having contact there. And it was just this, I don't know, uncomfortable truth, inconvenient truth, but it was a fact. Has that gotten in the way of the appropriate action? I don't think so. Obviously, our sympathy goes out to the gay community. We have a, a huge and proud uh, LGBTQ community in Orlando, uh, and I'm on a uh, vice chair of the Equality Caucus. So the fact that that is an issue uh, motivates me more uh, to help out, knowing that uh, we need to represent our constituents. And there's been a history in the past uh, with HIV where that's been an issue. So I would say it's more of a motivating factor than a barrier. In but can I push you on that a little bit? Because no doubt the Biden administration wants to advance LGBTQ issues. But if this were 85 year old women getting this at a community center, you don't think before now we would have heard someone very explicitly just say, these are 85 year old women getting this at the community center. We need to do something about it. Well, we certainly included uh, the fact that it was uh, hurting the LGBTQ community in our letter. So you see members of Congress explicitly yeah. saying it, and we would encourage the Biden administration, if they're not uh, highlighting that fact, to also uh, do so. Look, we work on uh, health issues with a lot of vulnerable populations. Just think about the recent vaccine for kids six months through five years old. So uh, we know we have to, in the affirmative describe who is being hurt and why we need to help them. And so I'd encourage them to use the similar language you saw in our letter, which is to explicitly state it and uh, understanding the history of the failings in the past by the United States. Uh, we need to make sure uh, that we're being aggressive to, to help stem the, the tide on monkeypox here in the United States. This cycle feels familiar to a lot of people at this point. Uh, your letter, it's called a regulatory log jam, but we had COVID. We remember how that began. We had baby formula, how that began and then ended up. Now we have monkeypox. We invest so much money in all these agencies, but then they're so slow. Does a bigger overhaul maybe need to be on the table here? Well, I think it's really that there's only so many vaccines that can be made at a time that's really slowing things down. We want, we've we requested over a million. The only maker of it that uh, we're engaging right now is in Switzerland. And so uh, 
I don't think there's a lack of will or it's an agency issue. I just think as different threats come up uh, that uh, we have to redeploy vaccines just like we had to do early in the pandemic. Uh, but we must do so with urgency, uh, given um, that it's affecting so many Americans. But do the facts track with that? Because so we saw these, I think it was like four circuit parties, which if someone doesn't know what that is, most people in the gay world does. People came from all over. They went to these parties. They took it back home. At the point that we had, you know, four or five cases here in the U.S., that we didn't rush out the vaccines, that we didn't contact trace. And then when we saw it spreading, you know, and we know we have these frozen specimens over there in, I, I believe it's Switzerland or Sweden, that have to be reconstituted, but the FDA had to come in, sign off, and just get it out the door. And they didn't. They took so long. Like, there were delays that were unnecessary there. Well, there's no question we're that the Biden administration needs to step up more, which is why we sent our letter. Um, but your overall question was whether it's a fundamental issue with uh, with our uh, Department of Health and the answer is that we're facing many threats right now. Um, that being said, we can never sit down when a group of Americans are getting ill, including our constituents. Uh, and that's why the Congress constantly has their oversight authority to help redirect focus when we feel that uh, uh, in this case, uh, there needs to be more attention paid to it. Congressman Darren Soto of Florida, thank you for um, your time and thanks for speaking about this very directly. It's my pleasure.